Um, I'm Michael from Hemlock Smith and I'm coming from Switzerland and I'm going to talk to you about um, the third album that I made with my, with my friends Les Poissons Autistes, which means autistic fish in English. And so I'm going to talk this about this new record that we made together called The Necrophone Sessions. Okay, let's uh, let's start this. Welcome to my cellar. I was recording under the name Hemlock Smith for about, I don't know, um, five, six years at that point. So I'm doing this for about 20 years now. And um, I met Les Poissons Autistes uh, around 2007. Uh, we were both on a compilation that was made by a Swiss magazine. There was all new Swiss music and uh, we were on this compilation and when I heard their music, um, as I was more of a folk writer or pop writer, uh, I was very intrigued by this dark and uh, ambient and uh, storytelling instrumental dark brass band stuff that they made with, with cello and, and a lot of distortion and noise. I was com completely fascinated by that and I, I heard stories in my head almost immediately, like like short stories that came to me when I listened to this. So we managed to get in touch and um, we liked each, each other and we decided like as you do when you have a drink with, uh, with, with friends, you decide to make a record together and normally nothing ever happens because uh, it doesn't happen. In this case we um, really uh, did a record very quickly and was very improvised and very free and both of us, both of the projects were really, really liked each other's uh, music. And uh, we made this record called Three Times Dead, which came out in 2008. And then we made a second record called Transatlantic Death Songs that came out in 2015. And uh, so every six or seven years when uh, our lives are or as the stars align, we uh, sort of make uh, music together. So it's kind of uh, like a, uh, a long distance friendship. And uh, I'm really happy that we are able to, to release this new album, which is coming out on Roman numeral records, and it's called The Microphone Sessions. So it was, it was funny about Les Poissons Autistes is that they met, I think, when they were students, um, a very, very long time ago. And uh, they had this uh, project which was basically noise and they uh, did it just for fun and there's a really famous uh, famous uh, first concerts that they made where basically they made some noise on their instruments and they had this habit of uh, sucking electric cables, jack cables, uh, while they were like electrified which made some strange sounds and uh, like, I don't know, uh, did stuff to them in their mouths and stuff like that. I, was, I, I wouldn't do that, but uh, they, they did it. And it was this famous uh, memories of uh, these very, very clever people who did crazy stuff on stage, really crazy stuff. And when I met them, I, I saw this picture, of course, but I, I also found out that they're very very funny people and they have a lot of humor which is usually very dark but they're also very serious people and um, uh, we have this uh, uh, saying that is in, in German which I really like which is called Galgen Humor and it's called basically uh, the gallows humor uh, if I can tr translate that so whenever you like have the rope around your neck, you say uh, some really, really bad jokes. And I always thought that this was their way of, of being serious, is telling really, really dark jokes. And their music is almost funny that way. And uh, so I also think that is a part of my personality, is to be 
funny sometimes, but is to be very serious as well. So we sort of really found each other and there's this famous picture uh, of them doing stuff like that. That got me uh, fascinated as well. So the, the story of this new record, it was um, quite funny as well. I think we, we met in 2018 for a, a drink and uh, someone said uh, we should really uh, make a, a free track for a 10 year anniversary of the, the first album. And uh, it was a certain time that they hadn't played together really. And so we decided that was a really good idea uh, and have a free track. And that was nice to do and easy to do. And But which track? Uh, so every one of us three uh, sent a few demos and stuff around and we didn't ha want to choose right away so we sort of worked on this and worked on that and suddenly we realized that we had like six songs and really quickly realized that we had a record. Uh, we didn't know how that happened but it, it was like really, really fast and uh, so then we uh, we decided to work on that and uh, we realized that we had to like fine-tune stuff like that and maybe redo a few things but basically almost everything was there and then we had a, a sound engineer called Sam Vane who did that for us who uh, put all the things in order really and made this very large and, and, and dark sound powerful sound that we didn't expect and so that was uh, amazing how in a way, whenever we make music together, it's really fast and um, and painless and we don't really uh, think about stuff too much. And suddenly it gets really clear in our heads that it, it is the, the way to go. Uh, so we finished the record like in, I don't know, maybe like one year and a half, which for us is uh, in our other lives and projects is really, really fast. Uh, so we're happy about that too. So uh, one of the things that really got us started on the record is that we found a, um, a drawing that Thomas Edison made around 1880. Uh, so one of the most famous inventors uh, of all time, genius. And he spent some time, uh, really some good time, working on a a sketch or drawing a plan um, about a machine that was supposed to be like a big gramophone, uh, if you want to like uh, call it that, who was able to record the voices of the dead. So you would be able to talk with the other side and uh, hear what they're saying. And he was, uh, I think, very religious and he really believed that it could be done. And um, to our knowledge, it, it didn't work. Uh, but when we thought about this, we found this drawing and we thought it was a great idea that someone really as clever as Thomas Edison spent some time working on a, a strange thing like that. And there's always two possibilities whenever an idea is crazy. It's either it's stupid and it doesn't work, that happens. Or maybe uh, we're not ready yet. Maybe the idea is too good, but the technology is not here, or in our minds, we're not ready for this. So we thought, well, maybe the microphone works, but we, it works, doesn't work now. And we thought that it was really cool to have uh, someone working on this crazy idea and when we make a record, it's also like a crazy idea, really. Um, so when we had this drawing, when we had this picture, we knew that it was the album was going to have microphone in the title. And we knew uh, that it was going to be about a certain number of themes, like um, the dead talking, or uh, maybe uh, people who are not uh, usually able to talk. Uh, being given, be given a voice. Uh, so we uh, thought about that a lot and it's really the image uh, that put us on this uh, 
on this uh, trail. When we decided upon the, um, the graphic design, uh, we uh, took this idea, this original drawing of uh, uh, Thomas Edison, and we we changed it. We uh, uh, invented our own new machine um, to to go with that um, with the photo session, where, which was done by Didier Auberson, which is a friend who is a friend. And um, so we decided to be some uh, uh, crazy scientists who work on a very secret machine. And I think the, um, the idea was to have some sort of a, um, a remembrance of these uh, science fiction movies of the 40s or 50s or 60s where there was the secret lab and, and people working uh, on, I don't know, a nuclear bomb and they are all in uh, uniforms or they all have ties and they're really serious, but they're also really crazy. And um, so we, we thought about this uh, being the idea of the, uh, of the, the photo shoot uh, uh, to have this machine which uh, was not exactly like that as uh, the, uh, Thomas Edison designed it, but we thought it was uh, more visual that way. And uh, we had some, some really good fun uh, doing this um, photo shoot in black and white, where we're all really very serious and uh, very professional but it's also complete uh, lunacy, really. Uh, and w we think that this uh, sums us up pretty well. And then uh, we had the cover, which was made by Mathieu Donaire, who is a young graphic designer from Switzerland. And uh, he basically took the inspiration from this original drawing, and he did some drawings by himself. And it's really beautiful and really happy that Roman numeral uh, decided to keep this cover because it was so uh, um, close to the music and so close to our ideas that it would have been a shame to uh, not to use it. And we're really happy because all these uh, ideas like the photos and uh, the graphic design as well as the music really came came uh, to fruition really fast and really without thinking about it and sometimes you realize after a certain time that when something is right it, it goes really really easily and that was uh, the thing i really um, cherished the most about all this that all the people who worked uh, like for instance the the mixing or the the, the music and the images uh, are uh, really uh, done in a very free form and this was makes it special to us. So the first song is Search the Shadows and uh, that was fun how this started. Uh, it, um, I, I wrote a demo uh, of a song and I decided that I wanted to have some rhythm uh, underneath it so I recorded a, a drum track to go with that and um, I'm not a drummer at all <laughs> and uh, when I recorded that it sounded really strange and I um, for me it was really a demo and we wrote the song which is basically uh, like almost a, a pop song really but it got really dark and really strange. And whenever we were working on it, I always said to Stefan and Philippe, to Les Poissons Autistes, um, well, you know, it's okay for now, but at a, a certain time, we're gonna have to re-record -re the drums with someone who, who knows what he's doing. And they always said, yeah, okay, well, you know, not now. And after a certain time, they, they really told me that they wanted to keep the drums, which I, thought was a strange idea but I, I got I accepted the fact that it was basically one of the elements of the song and so I'm really happy that it, it starts like that which is a strange beginning for an album uh, and then it had all has all the elements uh, I think of a, a song by by from us it has some 
uh, pop elements, but it also has some very twisted things. And I, uh, in the end, I think it, it's a really good start because you don't really know what to expect. Uh, and uh, the song talk about talks about the um, the idea that we all have our histories and the pasts and uh, stuff that happened to us, which was not cool. And uh, maybe sometimes it's no use to really keep digging uh, this same hole all the time that you need to let go, that you need to, to have some other new beginning. And that when whenever you, you search in that direction too much, uh, what you will find is darkness. And so uh, it is a, a personal way of saying this, that you need to uh, address all the dark things that are in our heads and make something uh, about it, make some, I don't know, uh, get something positive out of it. And for us, uh, creating music is a way of addressing these um, uh, weird or dark or strange thoughts that we have. So, um, the second song is um, The Glory of the Soviet Union. And that was actually the, the first song that we made that was really that we felt good about. Uh, and it's um, a song that writ that's written by Stefan Babet. And he uh, plays the electric cello uh, mostly. And he um, plays one part of uh, the electric cello and then he plays another one and then he plays another one. And in the end there's like, I don't know, 10, 12. And it creates uh, some sort of, I don't know, strange symphony really of, of sounds and um, when I hear his music I always think about um, stories I, I think it's the, the the songs he writes are almost like a movie and I uh, thought about I don't know why a woman who is um, living uh, during the uh, Soviet Union uh, period of time and she has um, lived through uh, the Second World War and the Nazis came uh, to Russia and they um, did really terrible things to her and to uh, her village and she's uh, saved uh, in the end by the communists uh, who really co come in when she's already almost dead and they save her and for the rest of her life she um, sort of um, feels deep, deep, uh, uh, she's very grateful towards the, the Russians, to, towards her country for saving her and she never questions anything about uh, Russia or the Soviet Union. And I, uh, but she's also traumatized and deeply, deeply unhappy. Uh, but I thought that was interesting for us because it's uh, a woman who speaks, so it's uh, a different story uh, than when a man speaks. And we thought it was interesting because in a way it's what's happening right now again in some of these European countries where uh, you feel that you have to be really uh, totally um, in line with uh, the country or the party or whatever and if you don't uh, you, you you're gonna have problems and so we thought that was uh, a, a story that's happening in the past but it's also um, something that happens right now um, and we thought it was uh, like a good movie to talk about track number three is uh, called Kum the ashes and that was a song that was originally written by Philippe Simon. He plays um, a lot of bass and some trumpet. He's uh, usually, uh, uh, in the beginning, he's a trumpet player. He played in a brass band he, when he was a uh, uh, kid. And he, uh, he always has this strange sound that, that's coming out of his trumpet, which was a really not trumpet at all but he has a, a, a strange way of mixing this and he sent me a, a loop of two minutes of a, a song that he made and uh, it's very unusual because uh, you, normally you have uh, all the songs that Les Poissons Autistes made are really long because it takes time to build all this structure and here was two minutes and I said well that's 
two minutes, it's not gonna work. So I decided that I was gonna try to write something else that was uh, following that. And I made a transition from one part to the other. And that was really fun to do. And when you hear the song, you really are hearing uh, the three parts. Uh, the first part that is really written by Philip, uh, some sort of middle thing. And then there's uh, uh, again uh, a song that is basically like a very dark and twisted pop song uh, in the end. And uh, the song talks about uh, a family that uh, uh, reunites around a person who is dead. And they are shocked uh, or really uh, maybe it's uh, at a home, maybe it's at the morgue, I don't know, but they're really uh, around this person, uh, unable to talk, of course, to, to the dead person. And it's uh, this idea um, uh, of shock or uh, deep uh, silence that you can feel in a, in a situation like that. And I think it has happened to almost uh, every one of us to, to be in that position, uh, especially in these times. Uh, so uh, we thought that is, um, it's interesting because you have uh, two parts in the song as well. Basically, you have a, a first thing where the story is told, and then you have a, a conclusion about this. <clears throat> but it is really interesting because it's a song. It's also the first single that uh, Roman Numeral uh, released. But it's um, um, a song that is interesting because everyone who's working in Les Poissons Autistes and myself are basically really had a touch or a hand in it. So it describes the, the, um, all our uh, ideas pretty well. Okay, so uh, song number four is going to be hard to describe. Um, it's a song called Krankenakte. And it's in German. Um, German is my mother tongue. And so I learned German when I was a kid. And it was um, amazing because I didn't speak German for like 20 or 30 years, really. I still know the language, but I don't speak it too much. And when I um, received this track, which is also written by Stefan Babet, um, which is basically only cello and uh, which is a really dark and, and, uh, and bass heavy sound, um, I, the first word that came into my mind was a, was a German word. So I wrote the song and it's about, um, uh, I wrote the lyric, uh, which is about um, a woman who was beaten to death and uh, she's in her grave and she's telling the story about what happened. And it starts with uh, like a slap in the face and the person uh, says sorry and then it gets weirder, it gets more violent and the end, uh, the final outcome is, is death. And she's telling the story and she's um, um, not worrying too much about the idea that she's dead. What she is really worried about is that she doesn't remember her name. And I thought about that because when you are, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, when someone does really bad things to you, uh, you sort of lose your identity and you can't think about yourself anymore. Yourself doesn't exist anymore. And so that was uh, the idea behind the song that is maybe about a dead person or maybe about someone who's living right next to you. And when we uh, thought about a title for this song, I um, noticed that there, the word Krankenakte, which is hard to translate, it means file of a sick person, basically, um, is, was also used by the Nazis uh, in the Second World War to make uh, medical files around um, of people they wanted to eliminate. So there were Jews or maybe communists or maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, gypsies or um, uh, psychologically ill people. And they made this medical file and then they had a stamp and it was over. And so we thought it was basically an idea, a really strange idea to have a medical file that says, you know, uh, about someone who's sick. But Krankenakte also means um, the, the dealings of a 
of a sick person, so someone who's uh, basically uh, bad and who does uh, terrible things. So it was a, a double, double word. And um, it's strange because I never wanted to write something in German. It just uh, basically the story wrote itself and this is why we kept it that way. So Necrophone song number five is the song that um, gives the album its title, but it's actually the other way around because we had the title already for the record. We knew that it was going to be called the Necrophone Sessions. And, um, and something weird happened that we had, I think, like 38 minutes of music. And we sort of had this strange idea that the vinyl record has to be 40 minutes long, otherwise it's, it's no good. So uh, I thought about uh, making a song that is really short. And um, I recorded this only with, with vocals. So it's uh, basically only vocals in the song, uh, some effects and stuff like that. And the idea was ha to have someone who um, is on the other side of this necrophone machine. And uh, you hear some breathing and you uh, have two people who are trying to uh, talk to each other and it's, it's difficult, it doesn't work really, so the person gets angry. And uh, still there is this breathing. And when we finished the song, we were happy about that. It was really basically like an intro, like an interlude. We, we noticed something very strange because the record was over and recorded uh, at the end of uh, beginning of 2019, I think. It was all done and then COVID happened and we didn't think about that at all, uh, really. And someone listened to the song and said, this is really weird. You have a, a machine and you have breathing and that's a respirator. Uh, and that was a shock because we didn't think that the album or the song had anything to do with COVID or the pandemic or what we're going through right now. It, it was never an idea we had. And suddenly uh, it was here. And that was really a strong moment because we then knew that the album was going to be called this. We couldn't change the title. It was just like that. So, uh, so it is really short, but it's also really uh, important for us. Okay, so uh, song number six is called Nowhere. And this one has a, a really strange story about it too. And this is um, actually an old song that I recorded, I think around 2010. And it was initially um, uh, destined for the second record we, we made called uh, Transatlantic Death Songs. And we didn't use it because it, it was totally not in the, in the uh, vibe of the of the other record and um, we it was on a file it was on, a, on the computer and we forgot about it and when uh, we um, thought about new songs there's always this idea that you are want to listen to old stuff to see if there's anything you forgot and then you uh, find something that is uh, possibly interesting and maybe you start from there and, uh, and there's always this uh, first, I think, idea to, to go through some stuff that you maybe misused. Uh, so I found this song and the song was written by Philippe Simon and it's one of the most, I don't know, it has some uh, programmed drums and it, it's really energetic and it has really a good vibe about it. And it had um, a, a vocal track that I did as a demo which I recorded uh, on a, a four-track machine, which was uh, not a four-track cassette machine, which would have been nice, but it was a, a four-track digital recorder, which is something that was not used for a very long time, because at the time you already had computers, so there was no use, really, I think, for digital four-track machines, but I had one and I recorded this demo on this machine, which I don't have anymore. 
So we found the demo and Philippe says, oh yeah, well, I got the track still at home and all the files and that's cool. If only we had the vocal track. And I say, well, uh, well, that's not going to happen. But I looked anyway and I, I found it. I had done uh, a separate recording of this vocal file, which I never did at the time, but I did it just this once for this song. And so the track was there. It was uh, all weird uh, because there was a lot of effects that you couldn't take away. It was all one take, so you couldn't change anything about it. But I said, well, if you want it, this is it. This is the, the one I have. Which is really interesting is that uh, not only did Les Poissons keep the song, uh, it was never any question about uh, redoing the vocal track because it was not possible. I could never sing that way again ever, I think. And uh, what I also find really funny, uh, if you think about uh, all this stuff about the, the, the machines, these old machines like the microphone, is that I found this vocal track on an old machine and it was not supposed to be here. And it was like a ghost from 10 years ago. It was my voice, but is not my voice anymore. Uh, so I think this song is really interesting in, in that sense. And in what, what the words are concerned, um, it's about um, people running around uh, in circles uh, as we do in our modern society and running and running and running we never think at all about what's happening to us. And so we are running really fast, but we're running nowhere. Uh, and so that was the idea of the song. I really like the idea. What I really enjoy about this uh, version is that it's speaking uh, from a period that doesn't exist anymore. And it's, it's still here and it's still part of our story. Okay, so the last song is called Black Friday. And um, this is a really an impossible song to describe, almost. Um, I received um, a seven-minute version of it by Philippe Simon, who uh, used most of the, the original recording was trumpet, but it was really uh, lowered to, I don't know, two or three octaves. It was almost like this bass sound coming from a strange place. And uh, it was really going on and on, and there was no drums. And I, I thought, oh, that's, that is amazing. Uh, so I, I wrote some lyrics uh, uh, on it. And then, I don't know how, but we decided that seven minutes was really not long enough for this song, uh, which is, you know, already long, but it, it's, it was not telling the whole story. So uh, we did uh, like an intro and we did a conclusion of the song and it has, it starts at a place and it goes somewhere and it, then it goes to this original version and in the end it changes again. So it's almost like a four or five part uh, symphony if, if I can use that word because it um, tells a, a whole uh, um, really complicated story in terms of music and the song is about um, the end of the world and it's about um, someone who realizes that this day is coming and the first reflex that the person has is I'm really glad I made my shopping today then I'm also really glad it's Friday because it's the weekend and these are really stupid thoughts but stuff like that can happen when you have a crisis. You think about taking stuff with you that it's not really interesting. And I thought this was a good um, a good way of telling how we sort of, um, also in this I idea of the pandemic and stuff like that, of when people tell us, like it happens here in Switzerland, um, the shops are cl closing in two days and then it's going to be shut down for like a month or I don't know how long. And what people are doing is they're really rushing to get into the stores and they buy stuff for survival, of course, but they also buy stuff they don't really need. 
and this was uh, something that I, I, I really cared about people uh, being afraid to be sick but also rushing to get into the store and fighting for stuff that is not uh, useful really so it's the end of the world in, in the song because this is really basically uh, I don't know if it's a nuclear crisis whatever happens I, it's that it doesn't say but it's also the 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 end of the world in terms of what we are as as people and so I thought that was a good conclusion for this album uh, it, it's really it couldn't be any other song uh, than this because it's basically such a long track and I'm really proud about this one.